Welcome back to sports. I'm Wes Blankenship, Travis Schlenk, general manager of the Atlanta Hawks. What a night it is for you, man. You've been in meetings, GM meetings all day. You got the NBA draft combine going on. And then, of course, we have the NBA draft lottery. What's your mindset as you go into this fateful decision for the team tonight? Something you have no control in. <laughs> I was going to say, this is a pretty easy one for me. I just get to sit there and watch. Um, you know, hopefully we get a good little luck. You know, ping pong balls bounce our ways, and it'll be an exciting time for us for sure. Where are you right now as, as a front office with evaluating players when you get to this point in the offseason, you get to draft lottery night, what do you hope to have squared away already? Well, we've been working on a lot of intel on the guys, you know, making calls to other high school coaches, making college to the AU coaches, obviously they're college coaches. So we've been doing a lot of background intel on these guys. So whatever way the ping pong balls bounce, you know, we'll have a good base on the guys that we think are going to be there for wherever our picks end up being. What is the energy like when you when you watch this? I know that, like you said, you don't have any control over it, but you have players like generational talents, like fans want to say, Zion Williamson on the board, for instance. When you have those ping pong balls coming through and you see where you're going to end up, what's going through your mind as you kind of start to put the pieces together and that pick starts to take shape? Yeah, what we don't want to see is teams' names not called behind ours. Obviously, that means if they're not called, they jumped up into the top four this year. So we don't want those teams jumping in front of us. And then when they get to us, we don't want our name called. We want them to jump right to team four, and that means we'll be, be in the top four. Um, so it's there's some suspense to it for certain. Um, but, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. We we'll sit there, but we hope that we get into the top four like we got in the top three last year with Jamie, and she gets to stand up there and work her magic. Going back to last year, did you already know, you can talk about it now, did you know how things were going to go with Trey and, and what you wanted to do if you know you did get that top three, top four pick with Trey specifically? No, we didn't have any idea you know, what was going to happen at this night. Now, as the weeks played out, um, we knew. We liked last year's draft. There were four or five players we really liked. So when we got the third pick, you know, we felt like it opened up the door for us to look to move back and still be able to get a player that we liked and pick up an asset. You know, I've stated the biggest assets we have right now in our organization are our lottery pick. So when we get those picks, we're going to look to maximize those. And if that means we can hopefully add another lottery pick, you know, we'll look at that again this year. If we're fortunate enough to have two picks, you know, we'll look to maybe package up. So that's why having multiple lottery picks in a draft gives you a lot of optionality. All right, I got to try here. So you get lucky enough and get that number one pick. Who are you looking for? Who do you want to get? <laughs> uh, let's wait and see <laughs> how the balls actually bounce tonight. All right, Travis, you're a good sport, man. All right. Appreciate it. Good luck tonight.